Welcome everybody, this is Nicole Pascal with Topaz Labs. Thanks for joining me here today for the introduction to Topaz Simplify. If you have any questions along the way, you can type them into your questions module on your GoToWebinar panel. Ashley Robinson, our product manager, is um, going to be answering some questions during my presentation and then I'll go over some questions as well afterwards. And today we're um, going to just go over the basics of Topaz Simplify. Uh, Topaz Simplify was created for the ability to turn any photo, any of your photos, even if they're unusable photos, into a digital art or, or digital media art piece. Um, it's really cool to be able to repurpose images that were out of focus and turn them into a beautiful unique art image and it has a really lovely technology called topographical decomposition uh, behind the actual plugin. We'll go into that and I'll show you about that here in just a couple minutes. If you're having any tr uh, trouble with sound or the actual screen, you can go ahead and either try to re-log in to the GoToWebinar um, through that, that link that was in your invitation, or you can um, call in by phone, and the phone number is also on that invitation as well. So let's go ahead and get started. We're just going to go over the basics here with this, this image, um, this Apple image. So I'm going to go ahead and make my background copy and go directly into Topaz Simplify by going to filter Topaz Labs Topaz Simplify 3. And most likely if you've used Topaz Simplify uh, previously what's going to happen are the previous settings that you used for the image before is going to be applied to the image that you just brought in. So to reset it and to take it back to that default position, just go down here to the right, lower right, and press reset all. And that'll get you your original, um, your default settings, which are not going to affect the image whatsoever. Just to quickly go over the interface, if you're not familiar with it, over here on the left hand side you have your preset panel and what this is up here is your preset preview and as you scroll over your presets you'll see that your preset preview changes and just kind of gives you a quick idea of you know what's available for you. So, and if you click on a preset here in your preset panel you'll notice that it changes over here in your main preview window. So here's before and here's after. That was with the painting oil effect. Um, over here, uh, let's see here, at the bottom of the preset panel, you're going to have the ability to save certain presets that you create, delete certain presets that you create, import or export um, any presets that you find. And then over to the right, again, this is your main preview window. You can toggle back and forth between your original and preview by clicking up here on these tabs. Here's your original and your preview. Or you can press your space bar on your keyboard, which is what I like to do. Or you can also press your um, left mouse button to do the exact same thing. Okay, so you can do that three different ways. Pretty simple. Over here on the right, you will have your preview window that shows exactly what you're looking at within your uh, preview, large preview. You have your zoom buttons, which will zoom in on certain areas, and then you're able to um, move this around. Oops, sorry about that. It's processing. Move the image around uh, with this little red box, and it'll go... Um, whichever direction you move it. You have your uh, zoom out, zoom in, your fit, which will fit the image into the preview window, and then your one-to-one, -one, which is at 100% of the image. You also have your undo and redo buttons, your snap button, which is really cool, and I'll show you that in just a bit. Um, and then you have your actual parameters here with on all of your adjustment tabs. The way that a lot of people like to start out with Topaz um, Simplify are, are these presets. And one of the most popular presets is called Buzz Sim. To give a little bit of a history of Buzz Sim, 
uh, just for those that might wonder, might be aware of the previous program, there was a program called Buzz Simplify. It's no longer around um, because it wasn't, it wasn't really maintained or updated, but they did come to us uh, originally and, and thought we might be able to do something with it. And that's how Topaz Simplify came to, to be. Um, and that's the technology that they had in that Buzz Simplify program is how the technology in Topaz Simplify started. It's a topolo topological, it's kind of a hard word, <laughs> topological based simplification. And what that means is it has the ability to actually take out certain details based upon their size. And that's uh, based upon the image I itself. So as you, let's go over here to this first simplify tab over on the right, you're able to kind of see this simplification process. I'm going to take the simplify size all the way down. And you'll notice that the details come back within this image. And as you move it up, in incremental measures, you'll notice that the different size details start to disappear and start to kind of smooth out and it becomes a much smoother image. And that is how the technology works behind this or behind the original Buzz Simplify. What we've done is we've uh, built upon that and really um, made it our proprietary technology and that's what we're going to go over here today. Let me reset all and we're going to go over these adjustments one by one just to show you exactly what each one does. So up here you'll have your mode area. In your mode area you have a combined base and edges. What that's going to give you the ability to do is actually look at the combination of the base image plus your edges but you actually have an edges uh, parameter and tab here, and that's how you can control that. You can look at just your base or just your edges. And because my edge strength is all the way down, it's, it's uh, now as I bring this up, you can see how the edges might come into play later, and we'll look at that. So I'm going to go back to reset all and it's going to go back to the combined mode. You can also process this as a base image or just your edges, which is a really nice um, ability to have because it gives you so much more room to maneuver whatever type of effect you're really going for. Okay, so down here, the first tab is the Simplify tab. Within that, you have your color space. Your color space is either RGB or YCBCR. This is kind of an important thing within Simplify. RGB is going to process your image um, on that red, green, and blue channel. It's going to introduce, as you um, work with the Simplify parameters, it may start to introduce some pretty powerful colors. And the way to kind of bring that back is to change it to the YCBCR mode, which will actually give you a much natural, more natural um, color within your image that you started with. So it's also going to kind of make it all the same across the board. So if you're processing a lot of different images, this is actually the color space to work with because it will maintain that, that natural color. Whereas the RGB starts to get a little um, vivid, and which is really cool for some of the painting techniques, but if uh, you're wanting to stay a little bit toned down, the YCBCR is why, that, why it's there. Okay, the Simplify Size Slider um, again, it's going to define the size of the details that are being simplified. So as you move this up, it's going to take out small details and then start taking out larger details. And let's go into this image just a bit. I'm going to take this back down and you can kind of see exactly what I'm talking about. And just keep your eye on these little circles here within the image as well as the wood here. And I'm just, you can tell in incremental measures that, you know, small sizes of the details start to go away. Let's just go up just a little bit more. 
you'll see over here details start disappearing and it starts smoothing out and then as you go up even more some of these larger patches of um, color will start to disappear and it just is an overall smoothing technique and that's what the simplify size slider is there for the feature boost is really cool. It is going to be the parameter that's most used for the painting effects if you're coming in here and doing this manually. This slider is going to actually boost some of the main features in, in your image and exaggerate uh, these details. So used with the simplify size, you start to bring in some of this almost stroke-like details start to um, occur and as you see um, it starts to look like a paintbrush it's really cool and it's um, like I said the slider that's probably the most important if you're trying to use simplify for an oil painting or watercolor painting effect okay so keep going down the detail strength tab is going to start bringing back the detail from the simplified areas. So what that's going to do is give you really the control to to make this image exactly what you want. All of these detail sliders here start to give you that control. And so working cor um, it correlates directly to the detail size slider. So as you move your detail size slider up you'll start to see a difference. This image is, let's go down here a little bit. Take this feature boost back down. Okay, and it has started to bring some of the details back into these apples that had actually previously been taken out with the Simplify size. So that's kind of where you get that control, and we'll go over that a little bit more later. Um, the Remove Small um, removes the smaller image details, which um, actually is below the size that you've indicated you want your image to be considered details and then the remove weak does a similar thing it removes weaker image details with a strength below which you've indicated you want your size of details to be determined so down here in your adjust tab you're going to see some uh, brightness, contrast, saturation, and saturation boost. This is really nice, especially with the painting effect that you might be trying or, or painterly effect that you're trying to create within your image um, because a lot of paintings are going to have a very saturated look. It's going to be strong tones. Let's go ahead and fit this so you get. So they're pretty standard but they work well within this particular um, within this particular program. The saturation boost slider is a, a great slider because it actually increases um, the saturation of your less saturated or your weaker um, image colors. So as you move that up, the ones that really aren't standing out begin to become much more colorful so down here this wood which previously was not very colorful has now really started to come out with these beautiful um, warm brown and red and green tones so down here um, in the last tab slider or tab adjustments are edges this is going to control all of the edges within your images. First off, you'll see the edge type, and we'll kind of go over that a little bit later as I show you guys how to do a line drawing within Topaz Simplify. But the ones that you have are color edge normal, color edge fine, normal, uh, color line normal, color line fine. And let's go ahead and show you right now kind of what it does. I'm going to go to my edges mode where I'm only looking at my edges just to really show off exactly what this does. And I'm going to take my edges strength, oops Daisy, all the way up to the top. Okay, and I'm going to take my simplify edge down. And that'll bring in some of my other edges here. So this, these are the edges that the computer recognizes within this image. Now, 
our edge strength is all the way up and our reduce weak and small edges and the simplifier all are pretty far down. So what it's doing is actually grabbing all of the texture as well and finding that to be lines and that can be controlled within this panel. But I just want to show you the difference of the edge type. The color edge normal is going to give you um, kind of a varied edge effect. You're going to have thicker edges, you're going to have thinner edges, it's really dependent upon um, which are going to be stronger in your image. You can go down here to color edge fine and that's just going to take it down just a little bit, not much in this image. Then you go to color line. Your color line is going to pretty, make, pretty much make all of your edges the same width about one pixel um, in this image. And so it starts to become a, a line drawing versus um, more of a sketch, which the other, um, the edge was kind of working as. And you can go down here to fine and then we can mono edge um, is going to be monochromatic. So it's just going to be black edges. And so we have our edges, the same thing, edges and lines. Now, if you want to inverse your color, it's really cool with the black and white effect because what it will do is inverse these uh, lines as white and give your background, uh, make your background black. So that's a really cool checkbox here. All right, let's go back to color edge normal. Now, the edge strength is going to increase the strength of your edges. It's pretty self-explanatory and you can kind of see the difference as you go through here. The simplify edge parameter actually removes the smaller edges within your image. So as you move this up, you start to see some of these detailed edges, all of the texture within the wood here start to disappear and it becomes much more of a simple image. This really gives you the ability to take out exactly what you want to take out and leave in what, exactly what you want to take in. So even when you get to, you're using this, you might still see some of these edges within these structured edges that you want to keep. So these kind of weaker edges that are, are barely coming through are going to be affected by this reduce weak and reduce small. And again, as you move these up incrementally, you'll see that certain edges will start to disappear, your weaker edges. And then the same thing with your smaller edges will start to just and this, again, gives you the ability to really keep what edges you want in and, and take out. The fatten edge slider is pretty self-explanatory as well. It just fattens up those edges, those strong edges especially, and really makes them quite apparent. So I'm going to reset all. And with this image, I'm going to go over some of our presets as well. Again, our buzz sim is one of our most popular because it takes away some of those smaller details and gives that painterly effect. It's not quite, you know, an oil painting. It doesn't have those really strong strokes, but it takes out those really unnecessary details and really lets you focus in on whatever your, your subject is. Uh, your cartoon effect is going to have strong lines, bold colors, lots of saturation, but it has, it's reduced a lot of those weaker um, edges like we just previously looked at and keeps those really strong ones. So it almost looks like um, a cartoon. So uh, let's see here. The image crisp edge is nice. It's something that a lot of people don't realize that Simplify has. Here's before. And here's after. It's very hard to tell with this image. Let's go in a little bit. If you'll look at this wood area, this is after. Let me show you before. Here's before. Notice this is before. It's a little bit more blurry than it is after. It just crisps it up. And the way that it does that is with, is with the feature boost and the detail strength in um, those detail sliders. So you're able to actually use it as somewhat of a sharpener if you find you're in Copa Simplify and need one. Let's go back to fit.
Your painting colorful is going to be really bold colors. It's going to be in that RGB mode because it is wanting to be a very colorful image. Watch what happens if I take this into YCBCR. Completely different effect. And because this is so colorful, um, it actually just changed um, the color pattern. But it is different, much different looking. So that's a fun thing to play with as well. If you find that you're wanting to do a painting, a really colorful effect, um, go back and forth between these two color spaces. And you'll see a major difference within those colors. The painting harsh color is just going to be a darker um, very harsh image and again let's see what it, we do when we go to the YCBCR. So that takes it down to a more natural tone, not as harsh, just something that's more consistent than the RGB, but the RGB has a lot of colorful effects if that's what you're going for. The painting oil uh, preset is going to give you those um, oil type strokes within the image We'll go over how to kind of create that manually here in just a sec. Painting watercolor is going to start to um, blend all of that, uh, those painting type effects together, giving you an actual watercolor type feel, how it just kind of bleeds into one, in, one another. The sketch color I think is really fun. And again, you have a lot of um, manipulation here that you can do within your edges in your color space. And then you have lots of other ones here too, your sketch hard pencil, your sketch light pencil, your underpainting, and your wood carving. I, I'm a real fan of this wood carving. I think it creates a lot of cool effects. But I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of here and go into, let's see here, this picture of this lighthouse. Let's just go directly into Topaz Simplify. My objective with this image well, look at that. It created a bunch of edges for me already, but I'm going to show you how to do that manually. My objective here is to actually create a um, an image that almost looks like a line drawing. Um, it takes out all of the image features other than the strong edges. So let's see um, how quickly we can do this. One thing uh, to kind of alleviate the pain of, of having to go through all of the simplify and the adjust and everything like that. It's just to go to your edge or go to your edges mode. And that'll allow you just to work with your edges tab. It's very convenient um, for creating these line drawings. So I'm gonna stay in actually I'm gonna change my edge type to mono line normal. And I'm gonna take my edge strength up incrementally and just watch how the edges start to appear. It's very cool. It really allows you to have a lot of freedom with what you want to bring in and out. So as this edge strength appears, I'm noticing that there's some edges that I, I want to kind of bring out and make stronger and take out some of these unnecessary edges. So let me get these edge strengths even higher. Okay, now I can come in with my simplify edge and incrementally put that up and watch how it just takes out kind of unnecessary, more distracting edges than I wanted at that point. Now I can come back in here as well and reduce weak edges if I'm finding that I want to get rid of those edges within the sky. Or I can come back over here my reduce small and that reduces some as well. Come in here and fatten my edges to get a harder edge, a darker and, and more strong line drawing effect. And now I can come in here and just play around and see, you know, which edge variation I like. And that that's how I prefer to do my um, line drawings. You lose the shading um, so if you want to bring back in the shading, you can come back over here to combined. And when you come back over to combined, you'll notice that all of the edge adjustments that we just did are still applied to your image. So notice how strong these images are now. Here's before and here's after. 
And this is obviously a, we've moved on to those color edges more than the monochromatic. Well, now I'm going to come up here to my simplify, and I can work with simplifying the actual image features itself. and start to create something else entirely. M my favorite thing to do is just to work with the parameters individually and, and really see what I can bring in and out of these type of images, creating my own unique little piece of art. And I think that's just that's something that's incredible with this piece of software. So I'm going to press OK and get out of here. Now. I'm going to show you one of my absolute favorite things. Let's see here. I believe it's this image. So this image of um, the waterfall here, it would have been a, a really lovely image had um, the focus been a little bit better. So as you can tell over here, it's actually um, quite out of focus and pretty unusable image at this point if I was to actually want to to print it out, blow it up, and, act, and, and see those details. The details are not going to be coming through. So what I want to do is take it into Topaz Simplify and see if I can create something from this unusable image. Okay, so here we have the waterfall. Immediately our last settings are applied to this image. Already I see that we're going to be able to create something that's pretty cool. But I'm going to go to Reset All and kind of sh show you where I like to start out because I think it's a really good place to build upon. Um, I like to really eliminate most of the color and edge within the image and then just build upon that and actually bring things in just a little bit at a time to create exactly the effect that I'm wanting and to see what effect might be there that I might not have thought of. So I'm going to take my color space into YCBCR. What that'll do is as I'm working with the simplify and feature boost and everything, it'll keep my um, keep my colors just a little bit more consistent and not have those overly saturated areas, which I don't really care for at this at this point. So and I'm going to take my simplify size and I'm going to move it pretty high up, about 0.75 or so. Immediately you'll see most of the image details and structure details are removed. So the, now this is kind of what I'm trying to show you is how just kind of getting it to a really um, smooth point and then building upon that and building your own piece of art from there really gives you a lot of creative potential for your image. I am going to um, up my feature boost just a bit and kind of bring some tone back into it. Take my detail strength up just so I can work with the details when I start to do so. And that'll be good for the simplify slider. Then I'll come over to my adjust and take down my contrast, my saturation, and my saturation boost. And this is kind of um, just kind of a base image effect and gives you somewhere to start. So now I can come up here and um, work with it and incrementally bring back certain image features that I like and keep the ones that I don't want in there out. So the first thing I'm going to do is come back to my simplify size and take it down just a little by little and notice as I take it down how certain features are um, then reintroduced within the image and it really gives you the control to stop where you want. So I kind of like working backwards like that because I feel like I'm actually building something. <laughs> it's kind of fun. All right, and now um, I can come in here with my feature boost. What I want to do with this image is create a certain oil painting effect. So the feature boost is going to be really important for this effect. So I'm going to take this up and watch what happens. Let's just take that up to high, high. So it starts to bring in um, all of these tones, these deeper tones within the image. Um, 
it gives you kind of the stroke appearance um, within those details. Within the waterfall, you start seeing these little uh, gray strokes appearing, and that is kind of where the feature boost comes in. Now I can work with my detail strength, and what that's going to do, it's going to determine what strength of details to bring back in. Same thing with the size. Let's take this all the way up so you can kind of see a difference. Okay, so as you see that, it, it brings back in um, whatever size you set this to is the maximum size of detail it will bring back in. So as you set this lower, it will um, take out more and more of the large details, and as you set this higher, it will bring back in um, more of those details. So then you can do some detail boost and get some and I'll take this all the way up too so you can see the change. What that does is it um, works with those smaller details and boosts the smaller areas. I'm going to take that back down. Now I can come and work with my Remove Small and Remove Weak. And again, I'll take this all the way up so you can see a difference. And you can kind of see a difference over here in these smaller areas. Let me take that back down. And I will push that up just a little. And then you can remove the weak as well. Take that all the way down so you can see. See when this is at zero, notice all of the texture in here and all of the, um, the tonal differences. As you hike this remove weak up to one, you can see all of those, um, it smooths out, those smaller areas, smaller unnecessary areas start to become, they start to disappear. Now you can come down to your adjust and really play around with your color as well. So if I want to bring my contrast back up, that has a completely different feeling than taking it all the way down. So it really gives you a lot of, a lot of different ways to go with your imagery. And an image that was previously not usable at all has now become a unique piece of art that I can blow up because it not I can actually enlarge and print out if I want to, and it, it becomes quite beautiful um, when it's large as well. And I can also play with my color or my edges down here and bring out some of those edges. So let's have, let's see if I. So as you see within the waterfall around the rocks. And I'll show you here by going to just my edges. If your edges become difficult to see like they are in this type of image, you can come to your edges and, and, and look at those separately than your base image. And then the combination of the two will then be your final image. But again, you can process the combined, the base, or just the edges as well. All right, well, I hope you've uh, learned something here about Topaz Simplify. It's, again, this is just the introduction, just to give you an idea of some of the power behind Topaz Simplify. And what's really cool as well is you can use it on your everyday images to take out those smaller, um, weaker details that might distract from the in, where you want the viewer's eye to go. So it, it really gives you a lot of control and there's a lot of different uses for Topaz Simplify. But I'm going to go ahead and answer some questions now. I see some questions, so let me just pull them up. Uh, James has a, a good question. Does the resolution affect the image? Will a 300 PPI have a different look than a 150? And yes, it does, because the details are based upon your image size. So if you have a much smaller image coming through, or the size of this waterfall image is much smaller, it's going to have a different effect than um, if it was much larger, because your details within the image um, have changed sizes, and that's how this technology works. And that's really good to know whenever you're saving a preset, which the way you save a preset, say you have a lot of these type of images and you really like this effect, you can come down here to save. You type in your preset name. Let's just call waterfall. 
created by Nicole, and then you can say whatever it's good for, and you press OK, and it comes over here in your preset panel. However, if you t if you come if you bring this same image in at about one fourth of the size, it's going to have a completely different effect. So that was a great question, James. Bob has a great question as well. Uh, when you convert to YCBCR and export the image back to Photoshop, is it converted back to RGB? Yes, it is. It is actually internally converted back to RGB, but with the, these colors. So it's not actually going to stay YCBCR when you process it back to Photoshop. Now watch what happens when I take this to RGB. Completely different um, effect. Notice the colors that are coming out within these areas that were pretty monotone within the original image. Here's before. So these rocks right here, which are pretty monotone colors behind it, now have these purples, blues, reds, greens, turquoise coming out. So that's where the YCBCR can become um, an effective tool to really keep your color consistent with the original image. So here's before and here's after. Susan, does Topaz Adjust do the same thing as Simplify? No, they are completely different programs. The Adjust tab within Topaz Simplify only has image adjustments. This really uh, does not work as Topaz Adjust works, if that's where you're getting um, the confusion there. Topaz Adjust is, is a program that really works with your exposure, um, your details, your color. It's, an, it's a really um, well-rounded program that you can do a lot of different things with. Uh, Simplify is more directed towards creating digital art from your photography and it has a completely different technology behind it with this size-based technology, but that's a good question. Uh, Clarence asks, are there additional presets available from Topaz? We don't actually have additional presets here, but there are uh, many presets out there online and you can just look for them. You can also go to our forum and type in presets. There's a couple threads on our forum that direct you to where some of user-made presets are kept and you can actually download those from the internet and import them. We have some nice ones for Topaz. There are some nice ones for Topaz Simplify as well. Uh, Nick asks, could you remind me of which slider can be used as a sharpening tool? Sure. Let me reset all here. This probably isn't the best image. Let me cancel out of that because it's just such a, an unusable image. Let's see here. We can go back to the Apple example. Go into Topaz Simplify again. One of the best ways I've found to do it is just to come over here to Image Crisp Edge. That's going to crisp up all of these really um, nice strong edges. So here's before and here's after. And what was actually moved was the feature boost, which started out at zero. So that was moved up to one. The detail strength, that's going to bring out your details uh, within your image. Your detail boost, and then removing the weaker ones will actually kind of crisp up those uh, stronger details. But because you're not uh, actually simplifying the image, your simplify stays down, your simplify size stays at zero, you're not taking out any of those smaller features, but you're just removing um, a little bit of those weaker lines. Stan asks, what preset did you start with for the waterfall? I didn't actually start with a preset, Stan. I just took it down a notch, or not a notch, I took it down quite a bit actually. Let's I'll show you real quick what I did. Okay, let's reset all. And what I did was I just turned my color space into YCBCR because I wanted to keep it this monotone, um, not monotone, I'm sorry, um, more consistent tone 
that my image actually has. I like the colors and the, the magenta and the um, warm tones in there, so I wanted to keep that and not go too crazy with the color. And then I just took my simplify size up pretty high. What that's going to do is kind of take out a lot of the um, image features and make it pretty flat and a nice canvas to start with. I uh, took my feature boost up just a little bit to bring some tone back in. Um, took my detail strength up just a little as well. And I think I took my detail size as well. But the, the main thing I also did was take my contrast down, my saturation down, my saturation boost down. And that gives me a really nice, clean, mild palette to start with. Here's before and there's after. And you can build upon this. And it's a really, I, I really like this workflow, especially when I'm trying to uh, create painterly type effects within Topaz Simplify. Bill asks, can I do a painting effect on a portrait? Sure, Bill. I can go ahead and take this picture of my lovely niece from the other day. Let's just go straight into Topaz Simplify. I'm going to come down here to reset all. And it's a little bit, again, somewhat of an unusable image as she is not in focus. And that is why I thought this would be a good image to use within here. And you can start out with a preset. Here's Buzz Sim. That's going to give you a more smoothed out effect, uh, just a really nice starting point if you're looking for that painterly effect. If you're looking kind of for that oil painting, you can come down here to oil painting. And as you can see, brush strokes almost start to appear within the different tonal uh, variations, even within the skin and the dress. And we'll kind of start with this oil painting effect. Now, I'm going to leave it in YCBCR, and I'm going to take my simplify size down just a little, just to bring back a little bit of the details. I've lost a little within her eyes, and I want to capture that. I'm going to come up with my feature boost to give a little bit even more of that painting effect. And you can see how that also changes the tones as you move that, so... Very interesting effects. Um, the detail strength, I'm going to move up just a little so I can then boost, let's see here, my detail size. I'll remove some of those smaller, weaker details. This is just a quick, just to show you that it um, can be really beautiful on on portraits. Here I'm going to play with my brightness and contrast and bring out some of those highlights within her face and then come back up with my saturation and take down my saturation boost. <laughs> I'll leave the edge strength as it is. As you can see, the edges are pretty apparent here in the larger areas, but they are um, the weaker edges are no are no longer within the image. And I'll kind of leave it that way for this painting effect. So here we can play around as much as we want, um, and then bring in the different details and features and I I really enjoy just moving each um, slider around incrementally just to see how to how it affects each image so here is kind of a painting effect on a portrait Rido asks can you give a tip where to see people's topaz simplified photos um, we actually have a gallery page on our website just go to resources gallery and go to topaz simplify and there's some awesome images on there and it will really show you the variations of what you can do with topaz simplify and I believe that's it for today thank you so much for joining me and I, I do hope to see you at another webinar coming up soon have a good day